I'm not here on my own merit. I'm here to share what the Holy Spirit has revealed to me and asked me to share with everyone else out of obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Take this video as a final warning in love and humility. We have no time left and I received tremendous amount of wisdom which I'll share in a compacted and short way here. You should watch all of the other videos I presented and I've invited you hundreds of times to join my Zoom group. The invitation is still open as long as we have time. The church is in apostasy and follows a false gospel. There is no understanding in the church. There are no fruits and everybody is living a worldly, ungodly life. But yet we know from Hebrews 12, 14 that it says, Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And yet again, the Lord himself says in Matthew 5, verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, because they shall see God. So if the pure in heart will see God, and without holiness, no one will see God, you have to understand that without holiness, nobody will see God. But this is not what the church teaches. The church teaches that all you have to say is with your mouth, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And this is another misconception or rather a poor reading of the text itself. When we go to Romans 10 verse 9, it says, If thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and shalt believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. But the word confess, I've explained many times, is the Greek homologeo, which means to fully agree. So if you fully agree with the Lord Jesus, who is the Word of God, as per John 1.1 1, 1 and John 1.14, you are fully agreeing with the Word of God. So the moment that you begin to disagree with the Word of God, take your own path and walk your own way, you are not confessing the Lord Jesus, Therefore, you're not believing. However, those who actually confess the Lord Jesus, which means we are in walk in full agreement with the Word of God, who is the Lord Jesus, 1 John 5, verse 7, then they receive the Holy Spirit. Because Acts 5, 32 tells us the Holy Spirit is given to those who obey. Obeying means that you're walking in obedience and you're showing fruits. These fruits are by the Holy Ghost, not your own works. That's right, there is nothing for us to do. But because we have believed, which is what we have to do, then we are bearing and showing fruits. As per John 14 and Matthew 13, 23. Those whose seed has fallen unto the good ground are those who hear the word, understand it, and bear fruit. Some 100, some 60, and some 30. No fruits, no evidence of the Holy Spirit working through you, which means you have not believed, which means you are not sealed for the day of redemption. Therefore, we have to understand that when we believe, we become a new creation, a new creature in Christ. The old is pass away and all is new. But this means Ephesians 4.24 that we put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. These are the fruits that prove and show to you that you have believed. Thus the Holy Spirit in you is bearing fruits of holiness and righteousness. If you don't see these fruits, you have not believed. Now, because we're walking in obedience, we trust, believe, and follow what the gospel says, not what the pastors and preachers say. For the gospel teaches us obedience, and women are walking in this obedience. No one covers their heads when they're praying or prophesying. They're all walking in pants against the commandments of God, committing abominations left and right, as if it's normal and accepted by God. But we just said that the new man is created after righteousness and true holiness. But because there is no understanding, Matthew 13, 23, then they all walking in disobedience. 
the men do the same. There is no head of the family. Women are taking over and children. And the order of the family is upside down. So is the order of the world. Why? Because we are in the last days. But we're called to walk in the spirit for which there is no condemnation to those. Walk in the spirit in the Lord Jesus and not according to the flesh. Romans 8.1 But for the entire Romans 8 chapter teaches us that those who are walking in the flesh are against God and heading for death. Therefore, we ought to walk in the Spirit. But walking in the Spirit means that you're showing those fruits. Without those fruits, you're not walking in the spirits, but in the worldly lust, which First Peter teaches you to flee, for they are warring against the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. But there is no fear of God, and everyone is walking in their own lustly and worldly ways. But yet we know we're in the time of the end, because I showed you what the Lord has shown me, the first vision where I saw the actor of the end of the harvest before I knew who he was and what the movie was about. That was one of my first few videos and the very first vision I received from God. In that same movie, the actor shares a calendar, which is the same calendar I had shared two weeks prior, posted on YouTube in the video called The Rapture is Here. You can go and watch this and know that the Lord showed me how what he was showing me was not my wisdom. And then a second sign also showing me a young boy, which turned out to be the actor in the movie Megiddo. That's the second sign I also posted here. This young boy turns out to be the Antichrist, proving and confirming the Lord was giving me wisdom that is not mine to prove that we are at the time of the end both leading us to the understanding of the two days. As per Hosea 6, 2, 2 Peter 3, verse 8. From that I have shared with you all of the wisdom I have received that lead us to see that we are at the absolute end of time. I have shared the calendar with you. It's called the Daniel Hidden Calendar, but only a few of you have watched it Listen to the warning and understand what's in that. But those who have decided to go deeper into this, some have joined the Zoom group, have gone through hundreds of hours and thousands of pages of explanation I've shared with those who are truly interested in walking in the Spirit, abandoning the world, and walking in holiness and righteousness, not by our own works, but by the work of the Holy Spirit. You have days left. The preparation is coming to an end. The Lord has given me a date for the time of the preparation to be done. And while I don't know all things and I don't understand how things will unfold, I have been pointed to a specific period of time, which I'm sharing here with those who have had the time to listen to this video, which is a short summary of everything I've been sharing. I won't go into the details of how or why these days are important, significant, or what exactly will happen. But the end of the time of preparation, what we have been called, calling in our group the day, which I recognize to be the time of the end of preparation, will start on September 30th of 2024 and end on October 17 of 2024. These two dates have been shown to us, to me and other brothers and sisters with hundreds of confirmations. What will exactly unfold, I do not know. Yet I do know that I sent a message to my children on September 30th of 2022 and in parentheses I wrote the day of the rapture. And that message was a message to invite them to follow and seek God for time is no more. I don't know what will happen or unfold on those days. And certainly I have 
great grief in my heart. But I invite you to return and follow the word of God, for it is our only truth and abandon the world in its lusts. For we know from 1 John that if you're friends with the world, you're enemy with God. I have been given these dates for a reason, and the reason is to be ready. We are not to stand out on the porch and look out on the sky and expect to do nothing in the meantime, but we are to occupy the time, share the gospel, and share the truth of the gospel, which is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What will happen on these days, we'll have to get there to see. But I have been put in my spirit to warn everybody to repent and turn back to the truth of the Lord Jesus, who shed his blood on the cross of Calvary and resurrected on the third day for us. There are no works that will save us. But yet when we have believed, the Holy Spirit will work fruits of holiness and righteousness through us. Return to the Word of God. Join our Zoom group for whatever time is left. Only the Lord will show us the next step. But this is the time to return to His truth. In Jesus' name, amen.